Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. We are in the shop at the moment and um, excuse me if you can see my breath. It's a little cold. Our heater is not working. We're gonna fix that. But uh, today in this video, we're gonna be doing a review of my Tolari battery. It's a 72 volt, 57 amp hour battery. Uh, for me BMX. We've got to race with it a couple times and I've had uh, you know some time to run it I'm just gonna let you guys know what I think about it and the experience that I've just had Overall buying it. So without further ado, let's get into it <laughs> So this is is the 72 volt 57 amp hour battery from EBMX. It's the biggest battery that they offer for the Tolaria. They do offer another 72 volts battery. It's uh, 72 volts 42 amp hours. They also offer two 60 volts 165 amp hours and one is 53 I believe. If you guys don't know the difference between this battery pack uh, and like a traditional battery pack is that this is using pouch cells instead of like uh, 18650 cells and what they have in here is um, a bunch of pouch cells that basically reach from top to bottom so they're 1p and 20s so they're 3.6 volts by 57 amp hour packs uh, and then they have 20 of them in there and that allows them to pack a lot more uh, energy in the same amount of space that's how um, they can get a battery to be rated like this so this battery is gonna run you $3,200. So it is an expensive battery. Um, the 72 volt versions, they don't charge with a stock charger. Uh, you have to buy a separate charger from them, which is gonna run you another $250. Size wise, I found that it fits in the bike very nicely. Um, the Tolaria has two rubber kind of spacers inside the frame that holds the battery fairly well. It does still have a little bit of play though, even with the rubber spacers on the side. Uh, but it's not that much at all. If you have graphics on the side of the battery pack, the it's so tight when it goes in that the rubber will rip the graphics off. That's why uh, this is torn and this is torn. Uh, all that was ripped up um, and I had to take out those rubber spacers and then it went right in. So taking out the rubber spacers isn't that big of a deal. Um, but it opens up the battery to a lot more play. With the rubber spacers in there, it, it barely had any play at all, but once you took them out to, because I wanted the graphics on, um, it had significantly more play. So I ended up putting like little rubber spacers in between. EBMX um, suggests just putting foam in between to stop the play as much. I think they should ship um, some kind of rubber spacer on uh, the top of the battery cap to keep it from moving. That's just my opinion. So when you receive these batteries, uh, EBMX does ship you a uh, bigger battery cover. It's because they're a little bit taller than the stock battery, so they need a bigger battery lid. Um, the only problem I really have with the battery cover uh, over the design is that it's 3D printed. Uh, I found that it's really brittle and breaks very easy. I didn't I didn't crash it or anything. All I was doing was shutting the the lid on the battery cap and, it, and the side of it cracked open. So I contacted EBMX about that and they did send me out a new one, but it's still 3D printed, still very fragile. So I'm very careful with it. Uh, they are shipping everybody that does buy these a second battery lid that's supposed to be stronger, their version two. Um, I'm not sure what it's gonna be made out of, if it's injected molds or if it's like a stronger polymer plastic. Uh, I have not seen it yet, but the 3D printed battery cap is not really uh, strong, it's not very ideal. If you do crash with it, I, I expect it to break. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves with the 72 volt pack is that it doesn't have a uh, percentage display on the pack. Uh, all the stock batteries have it, and that's just one of my biggest pet peeves on here, is that it doesn't have a digital reader for the percentage that you have left in the pack. You could argue that it doesn't matter because all aftermarket controllers will show you the voltage of the pack, but that opens it up to a lot of guessing on your ride. Uh, first of all, you need to know that um, the pack, a 72 volt pack doesn't sit at 72 volts constantly. Uh, if it's fully charged, then it's gonna be a, in between 83 and 84 volts. If it's fully discharged, it's gonna be around 60 volts, 61 volts. You have to be aware of that. And then as you're riding, that gives you a lot of, I mean, you're gonna be guessing a lot of how much range you have 
uh, in between those numbers. And that's just one of the things that probably most bothers me on this pack. Uh, I do, however, like the stainless steel case. Uh, it's very strong. Like I said, it fits really well on the bike if you have the spacers in. I just I just like it because it's very durable. I bought batteries where they're not so durable, so I, I like the fact that they have a very nice stainless steel case on this. The strap on it is nice. I've also had batteries that I've gotten and the strap breaks. So um, the strap is very solid. But as far as the pack goes, it's a very powerful pack and it lasts a hell of a long time. On a hard ride, you can do 45 to 50 miles, 45 on the low end, 50-ish on the high end, almost three times as much as a stock battery. You could get a really long range on this guy if you're going like 20 miles an hour on flatter ground, but uh, when we race, uh, we usually only get 20 tops, 20 miles on a stock battery. So, um, a lot of you guys have been asking me since my last video where I uploaded, um, where I raced my Suron and my Talaria in the same race, um, why this battery didn't charge when I plugged it in. So, I'll give you a little uh, backstory insight. I, I raced with this battery um, on Saturday and used 65% of it, so I had 35%-ish left. Took it home, plugged it in, it started charging, so I walked away from it, came back a couple hours later, and it said that it, the charger said that it was fully charged. So I didn't really think about it after that, put it in the bike, and away we went. When I got to the track, I um, checked out the voltage actually from my KO controller, and it said that it was still at 35%. So I was really confused why it didn't charge. I contacted EVMX. We discovered that it didn't charge because the battery was under 32 degrees. Something to pay attention to if you live in colder climates is that the battery won't charge if it's 32 or below. 32 Fahrenheit, uh, zero Celsius. So how we found out that the battery, it was too cold and why it wasn't charging, we downloaded a app, ANT VMS, and this app basically allows you to connect to the battery. This on the side of the battery we discovered wakes up the VMS, so we can click that to wake up the VMS and it's connected. And this app basically will let you connect to BMSs and read everything about the pack. So this does give you a percentage. It's at 99%. It'll give you a whole bunch of info. It'll give you error codes, which is how we found out that it was too cold. Here's the temperatures. And then it'll let you read all the voltage of all the cells and stuff. So, uh, but that is the app. The only problem with this app is that I did not have an Apple product. I have an Android. So, and they don't make the app for Android. So I had to steal my mom's iPad and connect to it. Loser. Yeah, I know. Anyway, guys, that is my review of the Tolaria 72 volt, 57 amp hour battery from uh, EVMX. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I uh, hope you found it informative and we're gonna go home and get warm. Isn't that right, Josh? Uh, yeah. <laughs>